international mm. with um, uh, replicas of St. Mark's Square. Oh, it, oh and, right. and Alfredo's of Rome has an honest to goodness restaurant with the original fettuccine Good and everything. Lord. Yeah, the, the restaurants are super. Oh, really? Okay, are we rolling? All right. <laughs> Well, Dick, it's nice to welcome you to Dallas Thank and you. Fort Worth, Thank and you. Uh, especially with your, your film, My Favorite Year, mm. which I saw and enjoyed very, very much. Oh, I'm glad. It's your directorial debut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is everybody says comedy is so much harder to do. As an actor, you know that, yes. don't you? Yeah. In the film, O'Toole says, uh, dying is easy, comedy is hard. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You so know why? the moment. Well, you you know, in a drama you can sort of slide by, do you know what I mean? But in a comedy it's instant. Either they laugh or they don't laugh. And the one thing I was always afraid of was that there wouldn't be any laughs and then we just sort of make this decision. Well, we had always intended to make this rather sensitive story anyway, you know, I didn't want that to happen. But fortunately there are laughs, so Yes, mm. real guffaws. Yeah. But Dick, why, uh, for your directorial debut, why a comedy? Well, uh, it's an interesting question. My agent, who is basically a director's agent, said a long time ago, there are very few comedy directors. And if, he said, if you can do it, you're going to be one of few. And um, if you can do it halfway decently, uh, you might really have a career and a new career and something you really enjoy and uh, it, it could be happening. I, I, I love doing this. I was happier than I've ever been doing this. As hard as it is, um, there's nothing more gratifying than to see this thing come out. But of course in film, directors now do, my goodness, look at Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. He is the celebrity of the century, he isn't he? Is. So um, you do get uh, the gratification of, of putting your creation up yes, there? Yes, with, it's, with total. Total. it's total. It's um, total. The script by Norman Steinberg was wonderful to start with and the input from all the other people was very helpful uh, but it is finally you. It comes through every cell in your body somehow. Every decision you make is your decision and I was lucky to have a producer like Michael Gruskoff and Mel Brooks who said to me, you're making this picture. Um, and these are your decisions. We're here if you need us, but it's your film. And that was finally, when I finally, it dawned on me that that was really the case. Um, it, there was an exhilarating feeling because of that. You, it, when you act in a picture and you make suggestions and you say, you know, wouldn't it be better if you put the camera over here? Or you come home at night and I would tell Paula, well, he printed that, but he didn't print that. He doesn't know what he's doing, you know. There's no emotion connected to it because somebody else is making the decisions. But now, now, I, now I'll never say any of those things ever again. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you as an actor or do you as an actor? Because I'm assuming you are going to continue acting. I think so. Someone will hire me, I will. <laughs> okay. Um, but as an actor, are there real pet peeves that you can have about the way a person directs you? Yes, um, I think that actors should be treated like thoroughbred animals, you know. I think they should be treated very, very well. And I don't like it when somebody is insensitive to what's going on. And I made sure that that set was a happy place and a, a relaxed place and a place for confidence, do you know? Because an actor will expand in that atmosphere or he'll close down in a fear atmosphere. And I wanted to make sure there was none of that. Um, you, you, you must be sensitive to these highly tuned creative animals, you know? Um, and, you, and you have to sort of read their thoughts. Being an actor is a good place to come from for directing because I could tell when they could do another one or when they'd had it and we just soon get out of here, do you know? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big help having been an actor. Dick, you have another situation there that fascinates me. You have Peter O'Toole. Now you talk about being, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wired. I think we could say Peter O'Toole is wired. Um, and then you had this young actor, Marklin mm -hmm. Baker, brand new mm -hmm. to film. Brand new, right, yeah. So now, how did you make those two things? Well, work? I knew once we had Peter that we had 
a very special talent. I mean, we had one of the greatest actors in the world. So in picking the young man, Mark Lynn Baker, I concentrated on the theater because I knew Peter's background was all theater and I knew I wanted to do long scenes and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I saw Mark in New York after some casting directors suggested him and then I saw him in a play in which he was brilliant. And I hoped that they would hit it off. If they did not, then it would be more difficult. So some days went by, two days went by, and then a week went by, and they seemed to be really having a good time together and liking each other. And I thought it was working, and then Peter came over to me one day, put his hand on my shoulder, and for one moment there I thought I was talking to Lawrence or Beckett, and he said, the lad's good, you've chosen well. <laughs> so I knew we were home, <laughs> he liked him. Isn't Peter uh, a, quite a little bit like Alan? Oh, I think um, he drew a lot on his own life. I know that. I know that also he admires um, John Barrymore a great deal and Flynn. The part was originally modeled on Errol Flynn. Then when Peter came into it, Barrymore crept in and then it all went through Peter and came out Peter. Many times he would talk to me about his own life and relationship to the character and I picked a girl to play his daughter in it, and when he came on the set that day, he sort of did that, and I said, what's the matter? Is everything all right? He said, she looks like my daughter. She looks just like my daughter. And there were lots of things like that throughout the picture. So he did relate to his own life all the time. He's, uh, he's had quite a life, and uh, um, it's only enhanced, I think, his, his ability, do you know what I mean? Because now you're, you're seeing all of it. And the interesting thing is he says, which I've never even heard of this before, that he has trained himself to do comedy, which I did not think was possible. I thought there were funny people and not funny people. And he said before this picture, he said, I'm ready to do this now. He said, I know how to do this. I can do this. And darned if he couldn't do it. He was right. He, he's, he's that kind of remarkable actor, incredible. The Joe Bologna part, mm -hmm. is that Milton Berle or Sid Caesar? It's more Sid Caesar than it is anybody else. Um, I wanted it to be the star of a new breakthrough show in 1954, a new kind of comedy show. Caesar, you know, wasn't a stand-up comic. He was a sketch comedian and actor, basically. And I wanted it to be this brand new show the start of something very new in television, the beginning of television really, and O'Toole, this courtly, rather graceful man from the movies, a different era, dropped down into these irreverent mad people, you know, who are only concerned in getting a live television show out every week. And I always ask the question of what in the world was Peter O'Toole doing in a movie with Joe Bologna and all of the, and Bill Macy and all of these all of these people who seem to come from Brooklyn or New York or, or the Catskills or somewhere. It's like he had descended from another planet amongst them. Has, uh, have people like uh, Howie Morris and Carl Reiner seen the movie? Howie Morris saw it, yeah. He was at a screening. We had a sort of special screening for everybody from live television. He saw it and he liked it a lot. And I don't know if Carl Reiner has seen it yet. Yeah. Neil Simon saw it and loved it. Well, Dick, it's great fun, oh, and for th some of us who were, you know, around mm -hmm, at that time, mm -hmm. it really is, is great fun. But I think that anybody today could relate to that. I film. think so. Um, we noticed that young people love the movie, and we questioned that in the beginning. We said, well, uh, they weren't even born in 1954, but there's something about live television that really excites them and interests them, and also... The, the O'Toole character, Alan Swan, um, has tremendous appeal to them. He has a line in the picture, I'm not an actor, I'm a movie star. And they go wild and applaud and everything. And the first time I saw that, especially with a young audience, I said, what are they applauding? I said, I think they want movie stars. I think that's what they're applauding about. Well, Dick, I hope the picture does really well for oh, you. Oh, thank you. And uh, who knows whether I'll talk to you next time as a director or an actor. <laughs> Either one will be fine with me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. There's something, well, hope, there's something legendary by this yeah. time, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There are a few people like that. I think that that's what a star is, you know. Yeah. But I, I really, as I watched that movie, I kept thinking, I hear is Dick Benjamin, a heck of a good actor. 
and yet it's his first time mm -hmm. as a director, and he's got Peter O'Toole over here <laughs> and this kid over here, I know, you know. <laughs> I know. It, I know. I, it took me a few days before I was really relaxed, you know. How is Mark? Did Mark? Oh, he was like that. He I just mean, fit. He just made himself fit right yes, in. Yes, I think it's a stage training, really. Mm -hmm. I do. He was just doing what he was supposed to do. Yeah. And he, they'd go off together a lot to Peter's dressing room. They'd run it mm -hmm. all the time and do the lines and everything. Well, of course, that would bring them closer yeah. together, yeah. too. But you Where people did not speak that way, although you would hear that in the street, influenced me in some way. Why? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if there wasn't all that language in the first place? Mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all sort of assaultive. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, are we ready for questions, Ronnie? Yeah. All right. I can just be quiet now. Uh, no, start to answer. No. Okay. Dick, why would you pick a comedy to be your first film to direct when everybody knows comedy is harder? Well, there's a line in the picture dying is easy, comedy is hard. Maybe that's hard. <laughs> that's good. All right. Thank okay. you. You have on the one hand Peter O'Toole, the distinguished. You have on one hand Peter O'Toole, very distinguished actor. You have on the other hand a young stage actor, Mark Lynn Baker. Now, how did the two of them get get along? Well, uh, it took a few days before I realized that they were getting along so well. Okay. Isn't O'Toole quite a bit like Alan, really? Well, to a certain extent, I think he is. He wanted to do all of his own stunts, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is the Alan character a take off on Errol Flynn? It started out that way, and then little Barrymore crept in there. Okay. The part Joe Bologna plays, mm -hmm. is that uh, Milton Berle or more Sid Caesar? More Sid Caesar, more behavior kind of comic. Okay. Um, as an actor, Dick, have you had certain pet peeves about directors and the way they treat actors? Yes. Um, sometimes there's a lack of sensitivity. Not often, but sometimes there is. Okay. Um, in directing, what were some of the things that you tried to do for your actors? Make it a, a happy place, a place where they'd want to create something and be expansive. Okay. Um, unless somebody can think of something I overlooked. 